Thank you, Mandalee. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and start by just sharing the slideshow. All right, so today's presentation is about Cape Employment and Earnings Survey, um, and I will be presenting. I'm Talia Walderman. I'm the program data technician here at CASAS, and I will also be supported by my colleague, Nicole Jordan-Clark. Um, if you have any questions, she is going to be answering those in the chat and just lending her support. Um, because we do have a small group, um, if we open up for questions, feel free to unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask that way. And also the chat is always open and for questions, you can send those in at any time and either me or Nicole will be answering them. All right, so... Um, before we start the actual presentation, I just wanted to gauge everyone's experience level with the employment and earnings survey. So, um, because the uh, gym or because the Olympics happened quite recently, we're going to use that as a sort of metaphor for the employment and earnings survey. Um, so we have one through four. Um, imagine this is your level of expertise. So using um, women's gymnastics. Um, level one would be that you're warming up. Maybe you've never tried it. Maybe you know how to do it. You've seen it be done, but you're really just in that beginning stage. Level two would be maybe you're competing at local level competitions. You have the foundations, the basics down, but you're not ready for that world stage quite yet. Level three is um, international competition, such as the world championships, you're competing with the greats, maybe um, starting to get more recognized. And then level four is an Olympic medalist. So really you're um, the peak of what gymnastics should be. Um, so yeah, go ahead and put in the chat what your level is, if you can. Well, I'm not seeing, oh, there we go. <laughs> Perfect, okay, okay. So we have some higher levels. Nicole gives us a four. She's the Simone Biles of the Employment and Earnings Survey. All right, and some threes and two threes. Great, so we have a, a bit of a mixed bag here too. Um, but no matter what level you are, I think there's always something to learn. So thank you for joining us today and let's get into it. All right, so um, what is the Employment and Earnings Survey? Well, for this program year of 24-25, all funded K-12 agencies, county offices of education, Joint Powers Authority reporting in TOPS Pro Enterprise are required to send Employment and Earnings Surveys to students who have exited a CAPE funded program and have not provided a social security number or an individualized taxpayer ID number. Um, the way that we can collect the information is in two ways. If students do provide us a social security number or an ITIN, um, we can data match and collect their employment and post-secondary information that way. Um, if not, we do use the employment and earnings follow-up survey to obtain job and wage information for NRS reporting purposes. And this does show up on table five. And we use it for both CAPE and WIOA. So the employment and earnings survey is sent to exiters. So it's important that we go over how an exeter is determined and what an exeter is. So an exeter is determined by TE automatically, and it's based off of the national reporting systems periods of participation, or what we like to call a POP. Uh, a POP is a participant's uninterrupted period of attendance. Um, and this does end at 90 days without attendance. So if a student shows up, they attend classes regularly. Um, once they stop attending after 90 days of zero attendance, that's when their POP will end. So this is why it's really important to attend, to enter your attendance hours on a regular basis, just so you avoid um, deeming students unintentionally as exiters if they are not. 
Some common questions we get about this is, what if a student returns after 90 days? Or what if our summer break is more than 90 days? So unfortunately, because periods of participation are quite strict and they are determined automatically in TOPS for Enterprise, there's no really getting around it. Um, so if your break is more than 90 days, then all your students are going to become exiters after that 90 days of no attendance, which is why we ask that agencies consider breaks that are less than 90 days. Um, if a student returns after 90 days of no attendance, a new period of participation will begin. So no matter what, that pop is going to end. Um, something useful you can use um, is item 15B and 15A in the CAPE Data Integrity Report. This highlights students who are either soon to become exiters or newly became exiters. So 15B specifically um, will tell you all the students that have eight, between 83 and 89 days of, between dates of service. So they're on track to becoming exiters. So you can always just use that for your own records. Uh, which students do not need a survey? Uh, that is, like I mentioned, students who provide a social security number or students who provide an uh, ITIN. Um, and also students with the following exempt reasons being death, military, long-term hospitalization, or incarceration. Everyone else will require an employment earning survey if they do become an exeter. Um, all right, so we're going to nail down some definitions before we really get into the topic of the Employment Learning Survey. Um, these definitions are really, really important to understand because when, for say, Nicole or I are helping you out with the process, we use these definitions. And if we're not understanding exactly um, what we're saying, then we're not going to be on the same page and it just makes it a little bit messy. So understanding these definitions is gonna help you really go through this process as seamlessly as possible and also help when referencing all the guidelines that we post every quarter. So the first one is quarter to take survey. This is the quarter that exiters need to answer the survey. So I'm gonna be using this upcoming one as reference. Um, the one that's due in October. So our quarter to take survey is going to be for program year 24-25 uh, Q1. It's the first quarter of this program year. That's our quarter to take survey. Um, but the exit quarter is different. This is the quarter that the student exited the program. And again, it's determined by their POP. So once they hit 90 days of no attendance, the that quarter that they've hit that 90 days of no attendance, that is their exit quarter. So it's different from the quarter to take survey. And again, it's determined automatically by attendance hours. So we do require this on a quarterly basis. So any student who does not provide an SSN or ITIN will need to be sent an employment and earnings survey two quarters after they exit. So each deliverable is for two quarters after exit. So we have our quarter to take survey, which in my example is pro for program year 24-25 Q1. The exit quarter for this quarter to take survey is two quarters back. So that's going to be last program year 23-24 Q3. And then our quarterly submission date is for when we require those deliverables to be due, which is our October 31st due date. And you'll see here also, there's a little bit of a grayed out um, square here too, because if you are also WIOA Title II funded, then we do require you to send those surveys out again, four quarters after exit, but that's not our primary focus for this presentation. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick check for understanding activity. So I have in this example, Lionel attends the Casas Adult Schools ASE program. He attends regularly all year and graduates, and TE determines that his exit quarter is program year 23-24 Q3. He did not provide an SSN or ITIN, so what quarter will he be surveyed? Do we have any guesses? You can feel free to throw them into the chat.
Okay, we have a guest here. Yeah. Okay, so we have a guest for program year 24-25 Q2. Which is not quite, remember, we're wanting to go two quarters ahead. If they're, since we always survey for two quarters back, in this case, we have to go two quarters forward to get our quarter to take survey. We have another guess for B, which yes, is correct. So <laughs> very fortunate for everyone here. I did make the example for our upcoming due date. So you can use this as reference. Um, for our program year 24-25 Q1 survey, we're going to be surveying students who have exited in PY 23-24 Q3. Yeah, okay. Thank you everyone for your participation. Really appreciate it. All right, so moving forward. Um, here is our employment and earnings survey calendar. Um, so I've laid out all the quarter to take surveys for this upcoming program year. Um, what exit quarters will it correspond to and when those e, e surveys are due. So I've highlighted this upcoming one in green. So again, we can see that um, for our quarter to take survey for quarter one for this program year, we'll be surveying students who've exited two quarters ago, and that's going to be due on October 31st. All right, so let's get into exactly how to complete the deliverable. So we do have three important steps. The first is to prepare your data. Um, the second is to save your exit population. And the third is to send a survey invite to all students in the appropriate exit quarter. And then we do recommend that you view your current quarter invitations, follow up with those students who are not responding in order to get those survey response rates up, because usually it takes a little bit more than just sending out the surveys in one go. All right, so before we get into the individual steps, I just want to maybe open it up for any questions before we move on. Doesn't look like we had any in the chat, so. I'm going to assume that we are all on the same page and everyone is following along. All right, so I'm going to keep going. All right, so step one, um, again, remember that uh, exiters are determined by periods of participation, which are determined by their attendance hours. So that's why the first step is always to finish entering and cleaning all attendance hours. This is very important. We don't want any students to be deemed exiters if they're not, if they aren't. So that's why we have this. Another thing we recommend is to check for students who are marked retained in program. You can find uh, whether a student has been marked this in TE by going to records, programs, and then enrollments. You'll see a column um, titled program status. If you filter, um, for retained in program, you'll see all the students who have this status. And uh, we do suggest you go ahead and remove that. And you can batch remove it if you if you need. Um, we don't recommend this because uh, if a student does become an exeter by having the status in their program status, it'll push them as an exeter at the end of the program year. And that way you're gonna have all these tons of exiters um, in your fourth quarter, quarter to take survey, and it's just gonna create a bit more work. So we don't suggest it. Um, another thing you can do before um, as a pre-check would be to run the core performance report. Um, this way you can, it'll give you the list of all the exiters of the quarter that you're looking at. And uh, that way you can check that you aren't missing any social security numbers or items. Um, and you can also check that the students showing up on that list are indeed exiters. And it's really important to run this um, report um, first because you can only save your exit population once and you cannot go back and do it. So let's get into exactly how to run this report. Um, so in Tops Pro Enterprise, you'll go in, select reports, state reports, California, and then the core performance population. 
For this report, we're always select selecting for the exit quarter. So again, using our example for our upcoming deliverable, um, we're selecting for exit quarter 23-24 Q3. So you can see in this screenshot, that's what I've selected. Um, the report, once you generate it, will give you a list of, a, a list of two und unduplicated lists of students. Um, those being the NRS students and the CAPE only students. NRS students are going to be those that are enrolled in ABE, a ASC, or ESL. And CAPE only students captures those enrolled in um, CTE, workforce prep, pre-apprenticeship, all our other um, CAPE programs. Um, if a student is enrolled in both, because it is unduplicated, they're going to show up in that NRS list. So CAPE is really for all the rest of those students. And you can see here as well in the screenshots that, again, the, the report, once you do run it, will tell you what um, year and what exit quarter you've ran for it. So just in case you happen to select the quarter to take survey rather than the exit quarter, there's that reminder for you there. So here is our suggested timeline for this upcoming deliverable. Um, it is September now, but don't fret, we still have what a month and a half to get it done. So um, on the right, you'll also see a screenshot of what we have posted on our website, which uh, is always posted for every quarter. So you can always use that to reference what step you should be on and how to complete each step. Okay, so step two is going to be to run the core performance wizard, which you can find in TE under tools. And we'll go into exactly how to do that. So like all our wizards, you're gonna be taken through a series of screens um, which guide you through each step. So the first is to select the program year. And again, this is the program year for your exit population. So you're really selecting for the exit quarter. So in this case, we have to go um, one program year back to 23-24, and we're selecting for the quarter three. Um, however, you can see that in this screenshot, um, you there's two, three, and four as an option. Um, I do see a question about um, providing the link to this PowerPoint, which will be provided um, later. So it, it, you will have this as a resource later, but um, yes, good question. <laughs> um, okay, so for this um, core performance wizard, um, if you have not kept up to date, if you have are missing previous quarters, you will have to run those first before you can move on to future quarters. So for this example, um, uh, you must run it for exit quarter two before you can move on to three. And vice versa, if you've already ran the wizard for the exit quarter, then you will not have the option to do so again. So in this case, they've already run it for quarter one, which is why we don't see that as an option to be selected. And thank you very much. Nicole has provided the resource in the chat. Okay, so going to the next screen in the core performance wizard, um, you will see a screenshot of what uh, the list looks like. So these are your exiters. It should look exactly like the core performance report that we that we reviewed in step one. So it should be that same list of students if you haven't made any changes to your data. You can always export or print this for your records. Um, and it is, again, maybe just like your last chance to review that everything looks correct, that um, students who do who do have a social security number are showing up as having one, that the start and end dates look okay. Because if you move on, you will not be able to run it again. So our core performance wizard does have a couple screens asking, are you really sure? Um, does this look okay? So if you're confident that your data is correct, you will hit finish. There should be one more warning screen that pops up. Um, go ahead and select okay and everything will be saved. Um, again, we're pretty strict about, you know, only running this once um, and, and TE will really make sure that you are 
confident um, because once you do save the exit population, um, you cannot really go back and change any information. So if a student then provides a social security number or something like that, um, TE is still going to have deemed them as an exeter without a social security number, and they're still going to be need to, needing to be sent a survey because it's taking what you've saved through the core performance wizard as your data there. So it really freezes that in time once you save that. So once you have saved your exit population, the next step will to be to actually send out those surveys. So um, we do have a number of listers we use for reference to manage those invitations to send them out. So the first one to start with, I always recommend is the core performance students. You, we can find these in TE under records and then core performance students. And this is gonna show you uh, the list of exeters, the same one that you saved through the core performance wizard, the same one that we saw in the core performance report. However, it's going to have removed the students who have provided an SSN or ITIN. So it's gonna leave you with just the students that require a survey to be sent. All right, so something to know about these listers is that they do have automatic filters. So for this one, for the core performance students, the automatic filter is in the column exit quarter. It always defaults to two quarters back, which if we were running it right now would not be a problem because we're in the first quarter, two quarters back is quarter three of last program year. That's the one we want. However, if you are doing this in October, it's going to be selecting for the wrong quarter because we've moved on to quarter two. So I always suggest um, to make it a habit to select the exact exit quarter that you want to look at rather than leaning on the default filters. So in this case, I would change exit quarter to 23-24-Q3, and that's going to filter for exactly what I want to look at. Um, in this lister, you always have a, also have a chance to review any contact information for students. So any cell phone numbers, any emails, you can add those in, change them, whatnot. That's some information that you can change, fortunately. Um, so once that all looks good, you have the right um, students you would like to send a survey to. Oh, first of all, <laughs> you can also add in another column just for more information. Um, to filter in for is CAPE only students. So if you right click in the gray areas, you can add that column in, is CAPE only. If a yes is populated in that column, that's going to tell you that that's your CAPE only student. So that's your, you know, CTE workforce prep students. So that's just another resource you can use for your own reference. Um, so now it's time to send the survey invites. Um, so in this lister, um, you can select any student that you want to send the survey to. Um, you can control all, select every student in the list, or you might choose to send the surveys in batches. Maybe you want to do that by class or by language. It's really up to you, whichever um, method works best. Um, so once you have selected the students by clicking and highlighting them in this lister, you would hit that send survey invite button. Um, depending on your screen size, you may have to click the more button before it be does become an option. Um, so just keep that in mind. Once you do hit the send survey invite button, um, you're going to be taken through another wizard. So the first thing it will allow you to do is remove any students from the selection you've made. Um, so you would do so by, again, clicking to highlight that student and then select delete selected students. That's gonna remove them from the batch of students that's being sent to survey invite. It's not gonna delete anything else. So once you have the right group of students, you would hit next. Then you have the chance to select for your language. These are the languages we do have available currently. And then you will also be able to select the method of delivery. 
And we do suggest that you use our default both email and SMS um, just to get a better chance of getting a reply. And then the next screen will show you the date of delivery. Um, we, you can leave this as is, that's more than okay, but we do offer like customization um, just in case you might wanna check whether it's being sent like on a Sunday or a Monday or whatever day you think might yield less responses, you can go ahead and change that. Um, maybe you know what works best for your agency. So there's always that to be customized. You'll also notice that we have two rows of dates, um, the first being second quarter after exit. So that's the sur survey that's being sent now, usually defaults to being sent to the day you're sending it. Um, and then that second row is the fourth quarter after exit, which is the survey that's going to be automatically sent six months from now, again, four quarters after exit, which is, again, a requirement for WIOA Title II reporting. Um, which is why we have that there. Finally, you can choose to customize the survey, which we do highly recommend. So to do so, you would select apply survey customization. This is your chance to upload any school logos, change your agency's name. You can edit the message that's sent to students, the welcome message. Um, you can even change the friendly sender name. So you can change the name that the survey is being sent from to maybe something that students are more likely to recognize like a principal or a teacher, anything like that. Um, so here are some uh, screenshots of what the options are for customization. Um, again, you can add in a school logo, things like that, change the email the survey is sent from. And then you can always preview any changes that you've made before it's sent, um, which you will do by hitting, what was it? Preview survey in student portal. And it'll take you to this pop-up where you click the link and you'll be taken to a separate browser window where you can see um, what the survey is going to look like when you do send it out. So we have some screenshots of what it looks like on mobile. This is without customization. And once you finish sending out um, through the wizard, it'll tell you whether they've been delivered or not. But we do have a couple other listers you can use to reference um, all these surveys that have been sent, whether they've been replied to. So this one in um, in the core performance student lister, sorry, the lister we've been looking at, um, you can always add in the column has survey Q2. If a yes populates, it will tell you that the student has been sent a survey for two quarters after exit. We also have one for four quarters after exit, which is has survey Q4. So you can just add in that column again by um, right clicking and selecting. All right, so how do we follow up on students once the surveys have been sent? That's where our other listers are going to come into play. Um, so we have another one under records. The invitations lister can be used to manage um, the dissemination of all current and future invitations. Um, however, this uh, lister will only be able to, um, only shows you by quarter to take survey and not by exit quarter. So why is this important? Well, it's not going to tell you um, whether that survey invitation you're looking at has been sent to a student for their two quarters after exit or four quarters after exit. It'll just tell you by quarter to take survey. So that's definitely something to keep in mind, especially for the um, CAPE employment and earnings survey. Um, again, these listers also have some more automatic filters. Um, it will by default show you only the NRS surveys in the invitations and surveys lister. Um, so to change this, you will select the green filter button 
And you will change it if you're using the invitations lister, you'll change it from NRS survey invitations to CAPE survey invitations. And if you're using the survey responses lister, which we'll go over in a moment, you will change it from NRS exiters to CAPE only exiters. Um, so just keep in mind that your CAPE only students might be excluded by default. So you're gonna have to switch between the two if you are managing both. In the survey responses lister, this one is great because it will allow you to see the answers to any surveys that students have made. So again, it's under records, survey responses. Um, and that's great too, because you can always export these answers into, for example, an Excel format. Um, what's also great about this lister is that you can double click into any individual student profile and it'll bring up their survey. So if they've already answered the survey, you can hit the get item responses button and that will populate all their answers to the survey. However, if a student has not responded, this is a great way to follow up and maybe personally contact students. I know a lot of agencies will call students and the student will want to give answers over the phone. So this is where you can go ahead and manually enter in their responses. You are taken into the individual student's profile by clicking. Um, you'll get this screenshot. And if you hit the answer survey button, it will take you again to a separate browser that is the, the student survey. And that's where you can go ahead and answer in their answers. Um, again, there's always more columns to be added into our listers depending on what you need. So we do allow you to right click and then add in the columns survey answer employed and survey answer um, quarterly wage. This will bring up their answers to the survey, tell you whether they're employed, how much they're making. Um, and again, you can always export this for your own records. So you can hit export, export student survey items, and that way you can um, keep a, a record of the responses. We do offer also some other available reports like the CAPE Employment and Earnings Survey Report. Um, that gives you a lot more aggregated data like agency-wide. So it, you can look at these reports, they'll tell you um, what your response rate has been, how many surveys have been responded to by students, how many have been responded by staff. Um, you'll get the an how the answers to those surveys and percentages. So it's it's more of like aggregated information you can use for your own records. All right, so here's one of the most important questions. How do I know that I've completed the requirement? So again, a great reference to use is the survey responses lister. Um, in the exit quarters column, we will want to be looking for the correct exit quarter. So in this case, we're filtering for our quarter to take survey. And we have to ask, do we have surveys in the exit quarter column for 23-24 Q3? So let's take this example. Did this agency complete the requirement for quarter to take survey program year 24-25 Q1? Can anyone tell me in the chat whether it has been completed? We've got a thumbs up. Yep, thumbs up, yeah, that's right. It has been completed, and how do we know this? Because we do see the right exit quarters under that column. So I can see that there's 2324 Q3 populated there, which is the two quarters after exit that we want. Yeah, thank you. Um, again, uh, also when you do the quarterly data submission wizard. Ah, we do have a good question. What does pe the pending mean? Right, so we have some here that say pending. 
So there's there can be a couple reasons for why it says pending, but the most likely answer is, um, well, in our case, the screenshot is from the Rolling Hills Adult School, which is our fictitious data set. Um, so we get a lot of pendings just because the emails and phone numbers we're using are not real. So um, you won't see pending quite often, but it can also appear because um, it's uh, it's like a, that automatic four quarters after exit as well. So sometimes you get that because um, it's set to be sent out in the future, but it has not yet been delivered. Also, if you change the um, date that the survey is going to be sent for any future dates, you'll get a pending rather than a delivered. But good question. Um, okay, so for the quarterly data submission wizard, we do ask for agency feedback regarding the surveys. So you'll see some options for just to report what methods your agency is taking regarding the employment and earning survey, and maybe even you can look to it for some suggestions. Um, here are also some document links to uh, the resources we've provided on our website. So every quarter we post guidelines, calendars, everything you need to reference to get your employment and earnings survey deliverable completed. And this is what the page looks like on our website for the employment and earnings follow-up survey. Again, you can also um, reach out to any one of our team. So the tech support team is always there to help you out with any technology related questions. Um, other great resources are the CAPE email, cape at casas.org. That's going to send you to either me or Nicole or anyone on our team will help you out. You can always reach out to us regarding anything CAPE related, any deliverables, anything like that. We're always happy to help. Um, but that's the end of all my information. So I do hope you feel more confident in your methods and please know that you can always work towards a medal for next quarter, get that Olympic medal. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to allow for any last questions. And because we do have some time, I'm also going to uh, do a bit of a quick demo so that we can do all of our steps together. So you can see what it really looks like to get this deliverable completed. But do we have any last questions before I do that? And again, you can always send it a question at any time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Ah, we have a question of, can you confirm or deny about the salary question if they submit the survey without it? Yeah, so this is a bit of a complicated question. So it is a requirement for the student to answer the salary question. So they are not able to submit the survey without answering it. Um, I know we've had a couple different suggestions regarding what do they do if they don't want to um, answer it. Uh, I know that CDE has suggested that you put the minimum wage. I think that's their standard requirement. Um, just put minimum wage if they don't want to answer the survey or the salary question. But unfortunately, they cannot submit without actually answering that part of the survey. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, again, Kate, Nicole is posting the PowerPoint in the chat. So if you want that as a resource, you can go ahead and download it. Yes, <laughs> there were rumors previously. Yeah, no, no official word on that quite yet. So um, just keep you know going as is with the salary question. All right, I'm gonna move into the demo and I will be turning my camera off just to save on bandwidth. All right, so I have 
TE open here. I'm in our fictitious data set. Um, so, sorry, let me just get this all prepared. All right, so the first step is going to be to run the core performance report. So I'm going to select reports, state reports, California, and the core performance population. Again, we're selecting for exit quarter. So I'm going to go two quarters back from now. So that's last program year. And I'm going to deselect. I only want quarter three. I will go ahead and hit generate. All right. So as you can see, we have our list of exiters, whether they've provided us a social security number or an ITIN. We also have their POPs laid out for us here. So the start date and the end date. So this is our chance to just review this information, make sure it looks accurate to our agency. I'm gonna scroll down here and show you that at the end of each list, we have some aggregated information. So it will tell us how many students are have been deemed exiters for this quarter and how many have provided us an, an SSN or ITIN. So if we subtract this number from the total, that's going to be how many students will require a survey. And we have the same thing for our CAPE only students. If we scroll down here, we have that same information. All right, so I'm gonna say this looks great. This looks accurate. I'm ready to save my exit population. So I'm just gonna close out of here and I will select tools, core performance wizard. All right, so again, I'm gonna select for my exit quarter. So I have to go back a program year. And unfortunately, in this data set, our survey has already been generated for all quarters. So again, I can't do it twice. So we'll just say that uh, I go through all the steps and I successfully save. In that case, I'm going to go to records and core performance students. Again, we have some default filters here. So I'm gonna change exit quarter from two quarters back to the exact exit quarter I wanna be looking at, which is 2324 Q3. That's gonna get me my list of exiters that have not provided a social security number or an ITIN. You can see the total for that is 230 students. And I'm gonna go ahead and send out some survey invites. Let's just do the first couple students. We'll shift, select. So I'm ready to send a survey to these students. I will hit send a survey invite. Yes, I wanna send it to five students. And it's going to take me through the wizard. So I'll hit next. Here's my chance to delete any students from the selection. So um, hmm, this person, let's say they haven't provided us a phone number. Maybe I just want to delete them. So I hit delete selected records and they are no longer selected. So now I can proceed. Here's where I choose language. So I didn't group by language. So I'm just going to select English. Next, delivery method. I'm going to use both email and SMS. And here's where I can change the dates if I wish. Maybe I don't want to send it today. I'd like to send it tomorrow. Next, this is where we get our option to apply survey customization. And I can make any changes I would like. So maybe I want to change the background color to more white. I want to bold it so it's easier to read. Maybe I want to change my agency name to Casas. And we have other tabs here where you can make similar changes, like changing the body of the email. 
Um, these are the individual questions. So again, I might, maybe I, I don't want this in red. I'd like it in more of a gray, <laughs> for example. Um, and I can always look at any changes I make by hitting the preview survey in student portal and hitting this link. And I'll actually show you that it takes me to the actual survey and I can, you know, pretend to answer it for a student. This is what they're going to be looking at. And something to also note is that the student themselves can also change the language option. So we have a couple other options here. Maybe they're a Spanish speaker and they would like to do it in Spanish. Um, so that's always an option as well. But let's go back to Tops Pro Enterprise. Um, so I'll hit next and I'll hit finish. I'll send those surveys out. Now it's freezing. <laughs> okay, there we go. Sometimes it takes a bit to load. All right, let's go back into TE. All right, so those surveys have been sent out. How do I confirm that? Well, I have a couple other listers to use for reference. Again, we have some automatic filters. So I'm gonna change the quarter to take survey to the exact one that I want. Ah, okay, this is a good question. So we have someone asked, what do we do if the invitations ready to go says no? So that just means that they have not yet been delivered. So in this invitations lister, you might see, um, oh, sorry, the other one. Records core performance students we have in this column invitations ready to go. If they say no, that just means that the invitations have not been sent. So to fix that, you would just send that student uh, survey. So that's an, also just another way to reference whether the students have been sent a survey. In this case, in our fictitious data set, every single student looks like they have been sent one. But that is a good question. Yeah, we have lots of ways to manage those survey invitations. All right, so here's our invitations. Again, we can check that some things have been delivered. Looks like something was undeliverable. So maybe that email um, is not a real email or anything like that. Could be for a number of reasons. Um, it also tells us um, what language it was sent in, whether that survey has been accessed by the student, Again, these also will only show us for um, NRS survey invitation. So just make sure you can also check up on your CAPE students as well. And that'll give us give me a different list of students. Um, something important to note as well is that when you do change this filter, it's going to stay this way if you exit TE and come back. So just keep in mind um, what you've selected because it will use that as your default. And then our final lister here for survey responses. Again, I'm going to change the quarter to take survey to the right one. And I can see here that I have Q1, I have Q3, Maybe I want to look at how many Q3s have been sent, but it looks like everyone's been sent a survey. So it looks like the requirement has been um, completed. However, maybe I want to, you know, call my students. Looks like this student has not responded. I'm going to click into that and I get their, this screen here. So maybe I want to answer their survey. Well, the student doesn't exist, so it won't let me. Sometimes we get some errors with Rolling Hills, but um, this should work. And if you hit get item responses, it should populate their answers as well. Um, and 
One last thing is you can add in a column by right clicking and hitting generation date time. That will tell you when the survey has been sent, what date it was sent. So you can use that to reference as well. Um, all right, do we have any last questions about the employment and earnings survey? Talia, I, can I just ask the question yeah. through chat? Of course, yeah. Um, I was trying to take notes as we went. Um, just want to make sure that I had my note accurate here. What I'm looking for is to be able to get my list of CAPE only students who did not complete the survey so we can make follow up phone calls. So it's records, invitations. I'm looking at the column survey accessed would be no. And in order to see that specific student, you just click on the student and then it will populate that screen will open to answer the survey. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're using the column um, was accessed, that's just going to tell you whether the student has even like opened up the link that's been sent to them. So sometimes students will open the link, but they won't actually respond. So if you're using that as your reference, you're going to be filtering out the students who've opened the link but haven't responded. Okay. So actually, that's a great um, example. Let's go through that step by step. Okay, thank you. Of course. So we want to find the CAPE only students who have not answered our surveys. Okay, so I'm going to use um, the survey responses lister here. And I'm gonna use the survey responded column as my reference here. Again, we want CAPE only students. So I'm gonna hit that green filter button and change to CAPE only Exeters. So that's just our workforce prep and such um, students. Survey responded, let's change that to no. So it looks like we have 143 CAPE only Exeters who have not responded to our survey. So you can choose either maybe just to send the survey again. You would, you know, select your students. I'm not gonna select all of them because it'll load very slowly, but I can hit that resend invite button and that's just gonna send them again, another survey. But if you'd like to, you know, personally follow up with every student, oh, I'm sorry. I also need to filter for a quarter to take survey. Uh, let's change that to our quarter to take. And we only want the exit quarter for two quarters back. So let's change that as well. All right, so we have a much smaller list. 51 students have not responded. Um, if I want to personally contact these students, then yeah, I would go ahead and click into their student profile. And this is where I can answer the survey for them or um, from here. Yeah, that would be how you do it. Uh, we have another question. Uh, sorry, Joe, did, th did that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Except um, the answer survey on that example was grayed out. Yeah, that's just due to our Rolling Hills database. Okay. There's just, we get some issues sometimes with that just because we're using fake information. Um, but if the student has not responded to the survey yet, it should, that button should work. Okay, and then um, my additional question is, is there a limit on how many times we can keep resending that survey out? Yeah, great question. Um, so it's different between email and phone. So I believe, I'm not remembering which one, but I can reference that right now. Because you said we can only use the wizard once. So just wondering, yeah, there's a limit on the resend. So the wizard that you can only use once is only for the core performance wizard. So that is just to save your list of exiters. The wizard that sends out those surveys um, 
you 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 will do it one time the wizard but you can resend the surveys multiple times you can send it by email up to 10 times and by phone it's only up to three okay thank you yeah of course And we do have another question in the chat, which is, are the students with a social security number or ITIN number not on the list to send surveys to? That is correct, yeah. They will show up in your core performance report, um, but again, there's a column that tells you exactly whether they have a social security number or ITIN or not, but using these listers, they're not going to be showing up. It's only going to be those students requiring a social security number. And you can even see that in the filter here. It's showing me, sorry, let's look at this one here. Ah, it, this automatic filter does show you, right? Social security number, NA, equal with does not have social I ten as well and a so it's automatically filtering out those students who have already provided a social security number or I ten. All right, these are great questions. Thank you everyone for your active participation. Um, we do we do still have some time to answer more. So if you have any other questions. If not, <laughs> then I would just want to thank you all for attending um, and I'll hand it back to Mandalee. Thank you so much, Talia. And thank you everybody for joining us today. I did just pop into the chat in the evaluation. Um, all of our webinars are recorded and will be remediated with attendance as well as evaluation and support to the field. So please take just a few moments to fill out that registration. It truly does inform not only what we provide for professional development, but what we choose to move forward for remediation to post on the website. We also have some upcoming events. Um, my colleague, Holly Clark, has po posted that into the chat. We have some TOPS Pro pieces coming up. Um, and if you are a new admin, we have a new admin um, onboarding coming up in just 10 days. So with that, I just want to say thank you everybody for joining us this Tuesday morning, um, and we hope to see you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Nicole and Talia.